What is up guys? In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use Cine Designer Photometric. Brand new stuff here. Technically in beta. Kind of everything I do is beta, but... So go to Cine Designer, uh, this part of the website. Go to Newness. I like that they say Newness. That's funny. And it's... Uh, I don't have another graphic for it. It's this. It's the Beta Photometric Physical Version 1. Go here and download it, and you're going to get a .lib4d file. And I'm going to be releasing the photometric libraries as libraries, not individual assets. Um, and everything will be libraries eventually. So you're going to go into Cinema 4D and you're going to have your, you're going to have your .lib4d file. And you're going to want to make it like this. And to do that, in case you haven't seen the video, real quick, you go to Preferences. You go to Open, Preferences Folder. You go to Library, Browser. And you're going to want to put that lib4d in here. And then I think you need to restart Cinema 4D. And you're going to get this now. Hopefully it looks something very much like this. So we have a camera, a light, and a diffusion frame. And all of these are a bit different, so let's look at them right now. We're going to bring this in. Uh, it's in a weird place, so you could zero it out if you want to. And we're going to break down what's different about this camera. And you can, it's all compatible with all the old stuff. The main stuff that's different are the lights and the cameras. But the dollies and the grip and all that other stuff pretty much works the same way. So I'm going to put that in there. Cam A. And if you're not already working like this, I would really recommend doing a view like this. So create a new view like I just did there. Look through the Alexa. And let's bring in some people. Well, I only have this person for right now for physical. All by herself. Though she works fine for a demo. 180 to turn her around. So this is our setup. So... Uh, a couple things are new here. This is all very much the same. I'm going to frame up here. But you'll see now that the camera right here itself is its own asset. And there's nothing under it like all of the other cameras. And this has always been the goal to make a simple camera. And so we've done that here. So we also have a bunch of things written. So let's go through the things one by one. We have the focal length written out above the camera. We have the distance that the camera is focused at. And we have its height. So that's pretty cool. If we take the Cobra Dolly and we move it up and down, we see that the height is actually dynamically changing there. So it's nice to be able to see what the height is really quickly if you want to. And uh, let's click the camera again. We can change the field of view by changing the sensor size. So Super 16. And I'm going to frame back to something a little bit more normal, like here. And we can zoom in using this slider. So it's like a zoom lens at that point, or we could go 65 for your Cook S4 Prime. Focus distance is now controlled here. Um, it has like There's a little circle that you should be able to see that won't render. But when it touches something, that is what is going to be in focus. So it's our new little heads-up display for where focus is. You guys let me know if that works for you. Versus using the traditional Cinema 4D way. I think this is going to be a little bit faster, hopefully, for everyone. And what's really, really new, of course, is the exposure tools. So we can now enter ISO, frame rate, shutter, and aperture. And all of those things will actually affect the exposure of the virtual camera, the render. And on top of that, I have added a calculation that's done with these things to say, in the real world, how much light is required in Lux to get a proper exposure. And that's going to be important in just a bit. So that's the new camera. And uh, let me know how it works out for you. Next, we're going to go back to here. We're going to bring in this sky panel on a stand. And there's some new stuff with this as well. So I'm going to go to this. And I'm going to zero out. I oh know. I'm going to zero out the pen and tilt that it came in with. And let's look at what's there. So I'm going to simplify this eventually. But we have the top group that is uh, containing the stand and the light. And the light is actually another group that has a light and the Lux tool in it. And I'm going to eventually integrate them so that they're the same thing. But if you take the light now, you can turn it on, but don't change the don't change this number here. Don't change the lumens anymore. That is a number that I ended up calculating to make it realistic to the real world. So don't change that. With the CD Lux distance tool, <laughs> that's the long name for it now, we have a couple things written out. We have the beam angle at the top. We have the distance that we're trying to measure from the light. And then at the end, we have how much light should be at that distance written in Lux. And you'll see that it's already matching. I have this coming in matching 240, 240. And so basically, if I take this, I'm going to go to the top view. If I spin the light like this, and I move it so that 
the light is the distance of that little of that little um, indicator there, we should technically technically get proper exposure. That's at least what we've tried to set up here using Cine Designer photometric here. So I'm going to tilt this down, and it's all close enough here. And if you were to go to the Lux tool again, don't change the half peak beam angle because that's defined by the light. And don't change this uh, illuminance distance constant either. That's something that I'm calculating internally and eventually it won't even be exposed. But what you can change is this distance. So if you want to know how much light uh, is 350 centimeters away, you're going to get 850 lux. And that's what this is dynamically calculating here as well. So pretty cool. So let's put this back to about here. It's about 240. And I'm going to just add a floor really quickly and probably a wall. And so if you have set designer or you have your own materials, go ahead and add some for this test because otherwise it's just going to be happening in like a black void and that never, that never really looks all that realistic. I'm going to bring in the floor and I'm going to bring in one of my walls, which is like, I have like a pre-made, this one, this one has like a door in it and stuff. So I just, it's fast. If anything, it's really fast to put that in there. So I'll put that there like this. Pretty cool. And let's add this texture to the floor. That's all we really need to have the beginnings of a, of a realistic scene. You don't want to light in like pure black. Okay, so that's set up really nice. And now we're going to render through this camera. Oh, and the last thing I want to get, so go download this if you don't have it already. It should be if it's available for physical for sure. You need your X-Rite color checker. And we're going to need to flip it 180. And you want to just stick it in your scene. And this is one of the ways we're able to judge what normal exposure is, basically by looking at middle gray, looking at black and white, looking at the reflection. All of this helps us kind of judge exposure here. I'm going to bring this up to something like here. I guess I'm not going to put it. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit just so we can see a little bit more. So here's our camera. Oh, I see. Yeah, let's go to like 40 mil. And I'm going to just slide the camera in just a little bit here so we can get a better frame on that stuff. So go get the, go get the color probe. I think that's going to be in shot. Good enough. And let's rechange the focus, actually. So this is all the new workflow. Everything is under one camera object. And so far from my testing, it's actually been pretty, pretty nice. So everything is lined up. And we have to do very specific render settings for this to work now. So let's go into render settings. We need to go to physical. This is an implementation for physical renderer. Let's go to progressive. We can drop out ambient and subsurface. We're not going to use those. We'll keep these at 2.2. Two. That's fine. And let's add global illumination. This will be important. And we're going to do QMC, QMC low. And QMC, QMC basically is like kind of a brute force. I believe that's the word. It's like a brute force GI calculation. And it's the most realistic that Cinema 4D can do natively. So if we render this through the physical camera, oh, you saw the render I did earlier today for, um, for Instagram. I actually recorded this whole thing before live on Twitch, which I'm going live on Twitch at 9 a.m. EST. Um, daily. That's what I, that's what I'd like to do. Uh, I recorded this already and I was going to edit it for this YouTube channel, but I crashed in the middle and, uh, didn't save the VOD. So <laughs> I'm doing it again here. So here we are. That was our first progressive pass. And that's all you really need to sit through when you're looking for previews. And we have generally a normal exposure here. So that's pretty much white. That's pretty much middle gray. You can measure it in Photoshop if you want. And everything's looking normal. That's as close as we need to get in CG. It doesn't need to be like perfect. Uh, one thing you do want to do with the Lux Distance tool, if you don't want the beam to actually render like a lightsaber, you just click and make this second dot here red. So that's going to make it invisible to the renderer. That's what's happening. So we have a normal exposure because we matched the 47, what was it, 240 Lux over there to the 200. And the reason this doesn't look at the camera now, you have to switch it to render view. Uh, we matched the 240 lux that the camera needs, and we gave it 240 lux from the light. So something that should work now as you test, I haven't saved this. I'm going to just not save it and just keep winging it here. If you now go to a like 5.6, like that, this should render, a, you know, render a stop darker, you know, CG darker. I have, I'm going to be doing testing. Uh, to compare the actual Alexa response to Cinema 4D, and we'll see how different they are. I'm sure they're very different, but, you know, uh, we'll have an understanding at that point. I'll make that for YouTube. 
on the main YouTube channel, and then we're also going to be testing the sky panel and a bunch of other lights to see how close we are to reality uh, and comparing it to this as well. And so that's the first progressive pass, and we'll stop here. And so normal exposure with a light beam hit here in the chest and then a stop under. And if you if you look at the white sphere here, this one is about 95% reflective and it's a little grainy. And we'll talk about how to change that later. But as we stop down, now it's clearly like a tone, right? So that's a stop darker. So this is this is our new exposure settings in the camera. They're all built in right there with a bunch of other things exposed as well. So the next somewhat exciting thing for for me at least is that we have actual diffusion now so this is still has the remnants of it being uh an actual light source which all of the frames are in the current build but don't use any of these controls it's off and i don't think you can turn it on yeah just don't even mess with that uh the way to think about this now is to actually think about it like diffusion so that's kind of cool so we'll go to the top view here and we can put it in between the light and the talent and what we're going to hopefully see is that this gets diffused through there. So it's going to be softer and it's going to be darker. It's going to lose light. So we kind of messed around with the settings. What was this a four before, I think, to have that? Let me double check. We go back to use this render view. And yeah, I was expecting 240 lux at a four. So at these same settings now at an F4 with the diffusion frame. And I have this so that you lose about a stop to two stops of light through this and it's going to actually diffuse the light and make it bigger and softer. So let's take a peek at what that looks like. We're going to render again, progressive render. We're going to let it just go through one progressive iteration. And there's a bit of like color noise in there, but that's just because of the quick, the quick preview pass. I think that's because a lot of the light is hitting the floor. So we're seeing a lot of like warm, like noise essentially bouncing into the scene. And this has done what we expected to do. So it's a stop darker. I'm going to go from th to compare to this one, maybe two stops. It's probably closer to two stops under. Yeah, that's about that's a loss of about two stops, I believe. And if we look at the reflection of the light minus the light beam here, it goes from the little sky panel right there to the diffusion frame. So it's bigger. And if you look at the shadow on like her chin and her nose, it goes from very defined to more gradual because the light source is bigger light from different angles from a wider range of angles um is hitting her basically and so that fills in um a little bit of this side and it softens the shadow out so this is our ne our new physical diffusion and it's a little bit slow i will say that and to get uh to get this to be less grainy i'll show you what settings to use and to make a final render but these are the things that i would love for you to try out we have exposure here and that will control what's going on it gives we have a built-in light meter now that tells you how much light you need. This one sky panel is set up photometrically accurate, but I'm going to set up more things to be accurate. And we have our diffusion that is set up for a two-stop loss. So something like a bleached muslin or a full grid. And uh, some real quick things. You cannot double diffuse. That won't work. I tried it. That would have been cool, but it doesn't work. And I haven't tried bouncing and diffusing yet, like doing a book light. But I would assume it's very noisy, but it might be possible. So that's something to something worth trying. And so say you want to resolve to a final render. We'll go back to this. You're going to want to work in progressive the whole time until you're done. And you want like a nice looking render. Then you want to go to adaptive, stay low. These can be 2-2. Two, two. It's been okay for what I've been doing. Switch this to high. And then go get something to drink. Because it's going to be it's gonna be a while. So let's render this out. Render, render, render. And the more lights, the more diffusion, uh, the harder this is going to be on your system. And this is all CPU version at the at this point. So physical render all is, is all CPU. But I'm going to be hopefully updating Cine Designer Redshift to also have a photometric version where we control the camera's exposure through ISO and everything. And then the lights, I'm going to try to set them up to also be photometrically accurate. And then instead of this is going to probably take like five to ten minutes to render something like that maybe like yeah maybe like five minutes it would take more like 10 seconds or 15 seconds that's that's the that's the difference in speed with the two render engines but physical is the most used version of cine designer it's been around the longest it works on mac it works on pretty much any computer and it's super reliable it does all the things that we basically needed to do uh, especially now with the exposure controls it's just a bit slow but you're probably used to this already if you're using it but now it's just a little bit slower because we have to rely on 
QMC, QMC, global illumination to be physically accurate. If you use any of the other modes, it doesn't work out very well. It just doesn't look, it doesn't look right. And it isn't right. So let that finish up. Uh, I'm not going to do that on this tutorial. So that wraps it up for this. Uh, go download the new camera, Light and Diffusion. And I'll be releasing slowly in lib4d format, hopefully, just to keep them all together. Uh, adding more lights, adding a spotlight to this one, adding more diffusion frames, adding a way to change the type of diffusion, that sort of stuff. It's going to be pretty cool. And I'm also going to release like a specific sky and um, sun model that has the right amount of light coming out of it, which is basically like 10,000 lux for the sky and about 100,000 lux for the sun. That's where I'm going to... That's basically where I'm going to uh, profile the lights at. And I'll do more tutorials. And also, uh, come hang out with me on Twitch. It is uh, twitch.tv slash cinematographydb. I'm going to be going live uh, 9 a.m. EST every day that I possibly can to do some of the work and to hang out. We did one today. It was really cool. I usually make my Instagram post or do some scan processing or just do something. And it's great to get to have people ask questions or share share insights and that sort of thing. And it's a cool community over there. Uh, I'm starting to like it quite a bit. So let me know if you have any questions about this on the forum or via email. And uh, looking forward to developing out the photometric version of Cine Designer over time. I'll see you guys in the next video.